him to help. Then they have a problem. Allah Azza wa Jal instructs an angel to come, but in the format of a human being, which tells you how precious and valuable humans are to Allah Azza wa Jal. Allah is honoring them and making this angel look like a human being. And he's the judge. So he rules that measure the distance between his own village and the village of the righteous people he was going to. And to whatever he's closer, he belongs to it. So they start measuring and it is the mercy of the one and only Allah Azza wa Jal. Allah instructs the good village to come closer and he instructs the bad village to go a bit further and when they measure it they find him closer to the good village and Allah Azza wa Jal instructs them to take his soul to paradise this is Allah's mercy the Almighty this is the change that we inflict upon ourselves it is positive change it is change that is recommended by Islam. But on the other hand, there is change that we must not follow or do. And Islam condemns it. For example, if a person who's a Muslim decides that he would like to change his religion, is this accepted? Definitely not. This is known to be an act of apostasy. It is worse than treason. And if a person betrays his country, he would be faced with a capital punishment. He would be executed. This is worse than betraying your country. You're betraying Allah, the Almighty. The Prophet ﷺ also feared the change of the heart. So many times we may wake up in the morning and feel so strong, full of Iman, full of belief in Allah Azza wa Jal that we can spread Islam to the whole of humanity. We're so positive and sometimes we wake up in the morning feeling so depressed, so bad, so down that we doubt are we Muslim or not. That is why the Prophet ﷺ used to supplicate a lot to Allah Azza wa Jal by saying, O oh Allah, the one who turns hearts over, make our hearts steadfast in adhering to your religion. Ya muqallib al qulub, thabbit qalbi ala deenik. This is what he used to supplicate not once, not twice, most of the time. And that is why the companions, may Allah be pleased with him, asked him, O Prophet of Allah, are you afraid? Why do you always say this? And he used to say that the hearts are between two of Allah's fingers and he flips them as he wishes the Almighty. And that is why we should be afraid. And if we look at a lot of, well, not a lot, at some of the practicing Muslims, how they had changed. If you look at some of the da'is, some of the scholars, some, a minority, whom had changed their manhaj, their methodology, their way of thinking, after they were steadfast on the religion, they started to compromise. They started to give in. They started to retreat bit by bit either for fame and this burns people fame and glory burns people changes the heart before he was famous he was a good practicing Muslim mashallah following the Sunnah once he became famous he changed he flipped he started giving in and surrendering and retreating he's going back either because of fame or because of wealth and they always follow the highest bidder or because of desires and whims they are weak so in order to justify their weakness they twist the verses and the hadiths 
we've seen this a lot, unfortunately. And this is all due to the flipping and twisting of hearts. And that is why we are afraid. A proper Muslim is always afraid. And he prays to Allah, Oh Allah, don't let me turn back on my heels. Don't let me retreat. Make me steadfast on the right path as you wish and desire. Among the changes that Islam fights and rejects are the changes of Satan. Satan is working his best to change our nature, our fitrah, which Allah has created all mankind with. If you look at any child that is born, he is born on believing in the oneness of Allah. He is born on the nature of monotheism. So if this child was to be left alone on an island, he would become worshiping Allah, not knowing how to pray, not knowing how to fast, because this comes through revelation. But he knows that there is only one creator, and that is Allah the Almighty. This is the nature that shaitan, that Satan, is playing with and changing. As in the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, any newborn child is born on Islam. And his parents make him a Christian, a Jew, or a fire worshiper. So it's the parents, it's the environment that changes this fitrah. And this is all the handiwork of shaitan. Allah the Almighty tells us, verily, and this is Satan speaking, verily I will mislead them, and surely I will arouse in them false desires, and certainly I will order them to slit the ears of cattle, and indeed I will order them to change the nature created by Allah, and whoever takes Satan as a wali, instead of Allah has surely suffered a manifest loss. So this is the handiwork of Satan, as Allah tells us in the Quran. Explore the options. Match the qualities. Assure the success. What happens at school, or more specifically, what happens inside the classroom? The classroom. The classroom. Good qualities of classrooms. Interactive, challenging, collaborative, distributive focus, student-centered. Let's together examine the quality of education that is provided to our children. To judge this quality precisely, join me on Peace TV. Join Dr. Mamdou Muhammad in Teaching at School every Sunday, Tuesday and Thursday at 6 p.m. Saudi Arabia and 7 p.m. UAE on Peace TV. Where truth is hidden and misleading quotations create confusion. Where truth is hidden, lack of knowledge and wisdom cause upheaval and commotion. Where truth is hidden, manipulated scriptures and twisted facts emerge. This very hidden truth creates false propaganda, mayhem, chaos, disorder, and turmoil in our lives and the world order. But is there anyone with courage and wisdom? What is the truth and who has the courage to expose it? Because it's the right to know the truth. Watch Truth Prevail and Lies Perish in Truth Exposed by Dr. Zakir Naik next on Peace TV. The Prophet وسلم, cursed a number of women who follow Satan. The Prophet says, alayhi salatu wasalam, 
Allah has cursed the women who do tattoos and those who ask for tattoos to be done. Look around you. How many people do tattoos nowadays? In the West, we have lots of people tattooing themselves. And this is definitely a sign of Satan's handiwork. The Prophet says, alayhi salatu wasalam, those who ask for their eyebrows to be plucked, eyebrows to be plucked. How many women among the Muslim women pluck their eyebrows? This hadith is in Sahih. It is beyond doubt. It is a sin. Let me rephrase that. It is a major sin to pluck the eyebrows, even if it were to please the husband. It is forbidden and it is a sin. The Prophet goes on to say, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and the women ask for their teeth to be filed for the purpose of beautification, changing the creation of Allah. If a woman goes and gets her teeth filed so that it would leave spaces and gaps, that was at the time of the Prophet ﷺ means of beautification. And he justified this by saying, changing the creation of Allah. Therefore, change can be positive and it can be negative. For example, Allah Azza wa Jal condemned people who refuse to change by saying, and similarly, we sent not a warner before you, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, to any town, but the luxurious ones, the people with the money. The luxurious ones among them said, we found our fathers following a certain way and religion, and we will indeed follow their footsteps. This is condemned by Allah Azza wa Jal. And we have a lot of Muslims like this. When you tell them, Allah says in the Quran, so and so, or the Prophet وسلم, says so and so, they refuse to follow. And they say, well, my Sheikh, my Imam, my Guru, my forefathers used to worship Allah in this way, I will follow it. We say, brother, I'm quoting a verse from the Quran. Allah revealed this Quran for you. The Prophet said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, this hadith for you. He said, yes, I know, but I will not change. I'll die like this. I'd rather follow my grandfather. I'd rather follow the Imam of the Masjid, who I give 20% of my income. What are you doing? Are you a Muslim? Do you say Ashhadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah or Ashhadu anna this Imam is my wali and he is the one who's leading into paradise? This is a condemnation from Allah Azza wa Jal to those who refuse to change. But what kind of change? A positive change. Change in accordance to the Quran and the Sunnah. Are you worshipping Allah or you're worshipping your Imam, your Madhab, your forefathers? This is what every Muslim should think about. Allah the Almighty also praised and complimented people for not changing. In the first verse, he condemned them because they refused to change. And in here, he praises others for not changing or altering what they were believing in. Allah says, among the believers are men who have been true to their covenant with Allah. Of them, some have fulfilled their obligations. That is, they have died as martyrs. And some of them are still waiting, but they have never changed in the least. And scholars say that this verse and the likes of it were revealed in Talha, may Allah be pleased with him, Ibn Ubaidillah, and also in Anas ibn al-Nadr, the uncle of Anas ibn Malik, who missed the Battle of Badr because the Prophet went to the Battle of Badr وسلم, thinking that it was not a battle with the Kuffar, it was only a caravan that he wanted to take and abduct. But when he reached there and he 
found that it was an army, he engaged with them and Allah grant them victory. Anas ibn al-Nadr did not go with the Prophet ﷺ because the Prophet did not instruct them and order them to go. He said, whoever was ready, let him come. And who's not ready, stay. So when he knew of that battle, he felt really sorry and depressed. And he said, by Allah, if the Prophet ﷺ will have another war with the disbelievers, by Allah, he will see how I perform. And that was it. He did not say a single word after that. And when it was the battle of Uhud on the third year of Hijrah, a year later, he went and fought. He did not speak. Sa'd ibn Ma'ad met him. And he said, Anas, where are you going? That was before the battle. He said, Sa'd, wallahi, I smell paradise from beyond Uhud. I can smell it. I can feel it. I'm going there. Anas ibn Malik says that after the battle was over, they looked for him and could not find him. And finally, they found a mutilated body with 80 strokes of spear, sword, arrow, 80 plus in his body. Only his sister recognized him by his fingers. They could not recognize him at all. And they say that this verse among the believers are men who have been true to their covenant with Allah. Of them, some have fulfilled their obligations. That is, some have been martyred. They say Anas ibn Nadr is one of them. There is, of course, a form of change that all Muslims should refrain and abstain from. You should stay away from it. And this is something that undermines Islam. This is known as bid'ah, innovation. The Prophet wasallam told us that I will be the first one to reach the pool, al-kawthar, al-hawr. I'll be the first one to reach there. And whenever my ummah come, Whenever any person of my ummah comes, I will give him a drink from his hand, from the Prophet's hand, والسلام, I pray to Allah that he grants us this honor and that we drink from his hand, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And then the Prophet says, I see people of my ummah coming, but the angels are pushing them back. So I say, O oh Lord, Allah, ummati, ummati, they are my nations. And the Prophet ﷺ is answered by saying, you do not know what they have innovated after you. And that is why they're being rejected. They have innovated so many things in your religion that does not qualify them to come and drink from your hand. And the Prophet says ﷺ, destruction and doom befalls on those who innovate after me. Innovation is a very serious thing. The Prophet warned us and he said that whoever innovates in my religion, in the religion of Islam, this is rejected. Allah will not accept it from him. A mushrik, a disbeliever can repent by asking Allah for forgiveness and he becomes a Muslim. A sinful person repents he knows that he's doing something wrong so he repents an innovator never repents why because he thinks he's doing something correct that's why he would never ever repent and you try this we have lots and lots of innovators in islam if allah wants to guide them they would think and realize the truth from falsehood but if not no matter how long you talk to them, it will never ever be fruitful. And that is why we always instruct people, when you talk, when you advise, when you debate, when you have a dialogue with anyone who is an innovator, never ever say scholar so-and-so said and scholar so-and-so said. Always get them back to the basics. 
قال الله قال الرسول عليه الصلاة والسلام This is what Allah will ask us about on the day of judgment Allah will not tell us on the day of judgment what did Sheikh so and so say what did Imam Ahmad say what did Imam Shafi'i say what did Abu Hanifa say what did Malik say Allah will not ask us about this Allah will ask us only about the Quran I said in the holy book of Quran so and so why didn't you do it my prophet alayhi salatu wasalam said so and so why didn't you follow it oh Allah I followed this Imam I followed this Sheikh I had a problem I had a question there were so many TV satellites channels so I clicked on this one and he gave me a fatwa I took it do you know this Sheikh no do you know his upbringing no is he following Sunnah or not no but he comes on TV subhanallah anyone who comes on TV becomes a Sheikh we have singers we have dancers we have actors they're all Sheikh you are instructed to follow the Quran and the Sunnah and not to follow humans who make mistakes humans who change as we've just mentioned it's easy to change but the Quran and Sunnah never change follow them and inshallah you will know the concept of change that Allah Azza wa Jal approves of and you will refrain from the change that Allah Azza wa Jal does not approve wallahu alam wa nisbatul ilm ilayhi aslam wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala abdihi wa rasulihi nabiyina muhammad Jazakallahu khaira Sheikh Asim al-Hakim